Hello, hello friends. Jennifer Martin here and this is Awaken the Heart, January 14th, 2021. Will we see the breakthrough for our nation? I have an answer. So say hello to me, tell me where you're watching from and let's get started. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So my friends, I was taken into uh, the Holy Spirit the other night while I was praying and I want to give a chance for people to jump on here. But while we're waiting for friends to jump on, say hello to me. How are you doing right now? How do you feel? Are you guys ecstatic? Are you full of the Holy Ghost and fire? Are you feeling the joy of heaven? Are you feeling the celebration? Oh my goodness. Are you feeling the breakthrough? Okay, so I want to start out with this before we even get into the word that God gave me. The other night, it was about two nights ago, Mundy and I are sitting and doing our normal prayer time at night. And all of a sudden, we are literally shocked and taken back because the spirit realm literally opens up to me. And friends, in, in my 20 years of serving the Lord, this has not happened to me in this great way. So I'm going to try to explain it to you. Hello, I see you guys jumping on. Hi, John. Hello. You guys say hi to me. I'm watching the comments, okay? And so, hi, Kayla. Good to see you. So the Holy Spirit comes on me, and it's like the spirit realm opened up, like a spirit of revelation came on me. And all of a sudden, I felt like I was being sucked into the victory of Jesus Christ. I can't explain it. I was being sucked into the overcoming realm, the realm where we are more than conquerors, the realm where, you know, he caused us to triumph over all things, the realm where we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony in Revelation 12, 11. I've never gone into this realm in this way. I cannot explain it in English, so I'm trying my best. But I w it's like the Lord opened up my spiritual understanding into a place where I saw the victory of Jesus Christ. And so I posted today, and I posted recently, you may have seen it, uh, Jesus, this just in, breaking news, Jesus is the first person in history to defeat the devil forever. Hello, by the blood of Jesus, he has defeated the devil, okay? This just in. Jesus Christ is the first person in history to impeach the devil forever. This just in, the devil is the first one in history to be defeated and impeached from his governmental role forever. So my friends, if that doesn't make you excited, I don't know how to get you excited today. But listen to this. So I'm taken into this glory realm and all of a sudden, this has never happened to me like this. The deepest joy that I've ever experienced began to explode out of my spirit. I literally felt like my entire body was going to explode. I would laugh, yet nothing was funny. Now, I've had the joy of the Lord before, but this was a different place in the joy of the Lord. Is it freezing? Guys, tell me if it's freezing. Somebody said it was freezing. Will somebody else tell me? Are you guys getting the signal or is it going in and out? Okay, let me know. I'm watching the comments. And so... I felt this joy explode out of me and I could not stop laughing. And even when I laughed, it's like it didn't satisfy the joy. So do you guys know what I'm talking about? Even when I laughed and it felt like I needed to laugh more. And even when I laughed, it wasn't satisfying the joy that I felt. It was so deep and so overwhelming, the victory place of Jesus Christ that I could not suffice it. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. And so I kept laughing and then Monday would laugh and there was this victory place in the and I literally felt like I was going to float into heaven or something. And I said, God, you're not worried about all this stuff going on, are you? You're not wor worried in one little bit, not one little iota. He is not worried, friends. I want you guys to share this because when I release this word, it's going to encourage you. God opened up a secret to me as I was in prayer and intercession came on me uh, the next day. And I went into intercession and the Lord showed me a place where we need to take care of this in the spirit. Okay. So thank you guys. You're telling me the signal looks good. Great. And so we're going to go into this on this session right now. So I want to enter into prayer. 
before we go forward, okay? And would you guys take a minute and share this broadcast and get some people that need to hear this word on here because this word's gonna be encouraging. It's gonna be full of fire, okay? So Father, I just thank you right now for all of us, Lord, as we are gathering together, Lord, to worship you. You said we're two or three gathered together in the midst of them, there you are. So Jesus, here we are. We want you to gather in the midst of us. We want your great Holy Spirit to come and just pour on us. Lord, I ask for the spirit of revelation, Lord, and the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of counsel to be on this session today, Lord, that we could be taken into the victory of Jesus Christ that you have already done for us, Lord, on the cross when you purchased it with your own precious blood. Lord, touch our hearts today. Awaken our hearts. Bring us into the Spirit of God in a way like never before. We are hungry for you. We want you. Have this place. Have this way. Have your way in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, friends. Will we see the breakthrough for our nation? Mm -hmm. I have an answer. And so that answer is determined upon the body of Christ. And the Lord is offering a place in his heart to us today. And if you will listen, he that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I pray that the Lord would continually use me as a prophetic voice so that we can know where we are in the Spirit. That I could be an oracle or a voice of heaven's news to you, that if you're not hearing the Lord, that I would be an echo of heaven so that you can hear what is God saying and are other people saying this, okay? So I see this great awakening coming, guys. I see this great miracle movement coming. Uh, I felt it. The Lord keeps giving me dreams about it. I don't want you to get down with the turn of events. I want you to know that the Holy Ghost has showed us that a great awakening is ahead of us. So why would our soul be downcast? Oh, soul, why are you downtrodden within me? For great is our victory. I'm telling you guys that the church, the body of Christ, is going to have more victory than we've ever had before because something is about to unleash in you, and I pray that it happens on this session, but in the body of Christ, God is unleashing, unleashing the Spirit of the, the, the Holy Spirit of God is unleashing in our time a revelation of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. His authority, his power, his sovereign rule, his government is upon his shoulders. And we're going to sing of it. We're going to proclaim it. We're not going to back up. We're going to go into the streets and we're going to begin to proclaim Jesus is king. We're going to tell the lost. We're going to tell the broken. And we are going to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. How does the signal look? Some people are saying that it froze. I'm hoping that it's not going to do that. I am on my data today. If it does that, then um, I will be saving this video and I will be uploading it to my YouTube. So if there's any problems, you can just go to my YouTube at Jennifer Martin CLI and this video will be uploaded directly to that after. But we're going to keep going. Pray for the signal. Father, we ask for no interruptions in the name of Jesus Christ. So guys, Jesus did it. We overcame, okay? We have overcome. It is already done. We have got to understand that. We do not wait for the government to overcome. We do not wait for the nation to overcome. We do not wait for the wicked to come in line with the revelation of Jesus as king. We don't wait for them. While the, the wicked are screaming in the streets, then let the good news of Jesus Christ be proclaimed in the streets. I am telling you that the people that are taken to the streets, and this is what the Lord just showed me recently, that the these young people, People, this young generation, they've been taken to the streets for a year. They've been taken to the streets, right? Proclaiming, screaming, you know, rampaging, just the fire on them, right? Spreading fire everywhere. Is this not a prophetic picture that God has called this young generation to awaken the, the nation? Is it not a prophetic picture that these same young people are supposed to come into the kingdom and they are called to the streets? They're supposed to take it to the streets, okay? So there's an anointing on this generation. And here's what's going to happen. I have an answer today about where we need to go in the spirit to see the fullness of time come in for the harvest, okay? For the harvest in our nation. And so my friends in Revelation 12, 11, it says they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. 
We could be coming into this time, friends. I've been preparing the church now for the past two years saying, are you ready? If persecution does arise, are we going to back up? Are we going to hide in the cave like Elijah? Are we going to let the fire of God continually cause us to be overcomers and victorious in the face of every devil, in the face of every enemy? It does not matter. The power of Jesus Christ is on us. The Holy Spirit is on us and he will not let somebody touch us if it is not our time to go. And that is the revelation that I need to get to the church today because I know story after story after story of someone who went and in the face of the actual um, nation, the people of the nation where they were telling them this was like an antichrist nation where they were doing mission work. And the soldiers come up to them and say, if you try to walk down this street and preach your gospel about your God to these people, we will kill you, literally in his face. And you know what he responded with? Do what you got to do. I'm going to do what I got to do. My friend, I'm walking down this street. And he did it, friends. He walked down that street. He preached the gospel to those people. He handed out Bibles. And when they brought out their guns, listen up, and put their guns to his head, all the people said later they saw a bright light appear in the sky. The fear of God hit these soldiers, and guess what happened? They were knocked backwards off of their feet, and only this missionary was left standing shocked at what just happened, ready to give his life and go be with Jesus and looking up and seeing that all of his persecutors were gone. Sounds a little bit like Jesus talking to the woman who had sinned. And then he said, where are your accusers? Huh? Because the rebuke of Jesus Christ takes care of our accusers. Do we believe it? And so even if, friends, we lay down our life for Jesus Christ, is it not a high honor in heaven? We need to get ready, friends. But am I saying it's going to be right now? No, but I'm saying there is a time where it's coming because Jesus said, in the manner you see me leaving, in the same manner will you see me return. Now, how did Jesus leave? He left in the midst of they just crucified him. He left in the midst of his disciples being persecuted. He left and did the disciples have a great victorious taking over the nation moment? No. In fact, they had a persecution moment where they were all the highly most persecuted gospel message. I'm talking about Iran and China, friends. You've got the gospel growing there like fire. Like fire. And so if it freezes, hang on. It might go back and forth sometimes. I want you to know the video will stay on. I will download it and upload it to my YouTube at Jennifer Martin CLI, okay? So just stay on. Let's keep going. Let's pray for the signal, okay? And so, friends, we are here. Um, we are here. So I want you to get ready, okay? If I'm still on, let me know. I see the comments scrolling, so let me know if I'm still on, okay? I apologize that that was happening. Um, the scripture reading for today, but like I said, I will have it on my YouTube. There will be no freezing on my YouTube when I upload it. So let's talk about what we need to see, what needs to happen for us to come forth. Um, and the scripture today is Malachi chapter 4, and I'm going to read that to you guys. It's I'm talking about the great day of the Lord. Okay, thank you, Sandy. I'm still on. Great. It says, For behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yes, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But to you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, says the Lord of hosts. Do you hear that? The Lord is showing victory to his church in this scripture before the Lord comes back. We might see persecution. We might see wickedness rise. But what I'm trying to tell you is the righteous will not beg for bread. 
The Father does not leave his people. In fact, we will be moving in such a strong miracle realm that people are going to be shocked at what is happening. I want you to share this right now, friends. Share this right now, okay? Now, get this. This is a day of victory. He said we're going to tread down the wicked. Listen to this. And they shall be ashes under the soles of our feet in the day that he shall do this, says the Lord of hosts. Look at that. Now, verse 4. Remember you the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded to him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. I want to pause here for just a minute. The Lord is making a point in pointing out the law of Moses. In this generation, in this great and terrible day of the Lord, in this season of the coming of the Lord, we are going to see a people that obeys the law of Jesus Christ. Am I talking about obeying 600 commandments? No, I'm talking about the two commandments Jesus Christ gave us. And that is one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Number two, love your neighbor as yourself. We are going to see a holy consecrated people set apart for the gospel of Jesus Christ who truly do not give him only part of their week or part of their heart or part of their day. But I'm talking about a fire filled people that is like a firebrand army running into the earth with one mission. And that is to win souls to their King, Jesus Christ. They are going to walk in holiness. It's all in my book. It's all in my book. If you've read my book, you know what I'm talking about. Awaken the Dark Horse Prophet. It's on Amazon. It's, it's, you can go to my website. You need to read this book because God told me to write it in 2019. And we are literally seeing the fruition of this book come to pass in 2020 and the years coming. But we are going to see a holy, consecrated people obeying the law of Jesus Christ. That's one part of what we're going to see in the return of Jesus Christ. We're actually going to see a return to obedience. In the return of Jesus Christ, we are going to see a return of holiness. This is why the Lord said, remember the law of Moses. Look at that. And then when Jesus stood on uh, the Mount of Transfiguration where he was transformed, he stood with Moses and who? Elijah. Why? Moses and Elijah are the two witnesses and the two servants that come before the great and terrible day of the Lord. They're going to prophesy, okay? And that spirit that was on both of them is going to be in the generation that comes in this time, okay? So we're going to see the spirit of obedience, that Moses always declared to the children of Israel, okay? Obedience, consecration, holiness. Now look at the next verse. Right after remember the law of Moses in Malachi 4, the Lord begins to say in verse 5, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And you know what it says. He will turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So look, God is literally giving us what we're going to see in a generation before Jesus returns. Whether it's years, whether it's decades, whether it's whatever, before he returns, we are going to see in a generation obedience, holiness to the law of God, a love for the words of Jesus Christ, obedience to the words in red, wanting to please Jesus with everything inside of them. And the next thing that we are going to see on them also is the spirit of Elijah, which is the spirit of burning. It's the spirit of fire to stand in the face of wickedness and preach the gospel, no matter if the life becomes martyred or lost or persecuted. Because Elijah was the only one standing when he came and he went against those evil prophets, which were 850 evil prophets standing there, okay, on Mount Carmel when they did the showdown. And he said, let the God of fire, let the God who answers by fire, answer. Let him be God. And I'm telling you, there's going to be such a determination in this generation of standing on the words of God, no matter what they see around them. I don't care what I see in the nation. I don't care what's going on in the world. I know the spirit realm is truth. And when a devil comes up against me, he has to bow to Jesus Christ on my life and in me. He cannot usurp me. He cannot usurp my authority. He has to get out. And so what I'm telling you, friends, is this generation 
generation is going to be like a herd of horses running. God has unleashed us. We're going to run through this earth and we're going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am telling you, friends, now is the time to get the fire of God and not just do your little five minute devotional a day, but it's time to seek God in prayer and get that spirit of burning fire, consecration, holiness on your life. Set yourself apart so that there is no doorway for the devil to come in. And what's going to happen is, just like Jesus Christ said, the devil can find no place in me. He can't touch me because he can't find a place in me. And I'm telling you, friend, if you shut off the door to every demonic voice, I'm talking about music, TV, whatever it is in your life, shut off the demonic. No more compromise. No more eating at Jezebel's table. Okay, shut it off. Whatever you have to do, take a stand for holiness right now. Because I'm telling you, he that endures to the end shall be saved. I have so much more to share with you, but I'm feeling the fire of God on this right now. And so the Lord took me to the scripture and he said, If the heart of the fathers is not turned to the children and the children to the fathers, I will come and strike the earth with a curse. It's literally in Malachi 4, guys, right there, verse 6. If we don't see a reconciliation in our generations right now, there is so much division. If we don't see a reconciliation, guys, that curse is going to continue to function throughout the world, throughout our nation. And this is what the Lord showed me. He said, if we will come together, our generation, I'm talking about my age and older, and those of you that are younger than me that represent the next generation, you need to listen to me. He said, if we will come together and repent for allowing the children to go astray from the holiness message, from the consecration message of the Lord, what's happened is my generation, and I wept on my face. Y'all need to listen to me right now because I can't repent unless the spirit of intercession comes on me and it causes me to repent. And so I thank God that he uses me to repent for something. And I cry out to him all the time. I say, Lord, what do you need to bring your fullness in the body? Please speak through me. And the spirit of intercession came on me as I was laying hands on my daughter the other night and I was telling her good night. And I began to, the intercession began to rise. I wasn't expecting it. I was literally beginning to pray over her. And I started repenting to her on behalf of my generation. And I was wailing and holding her. And I was saying, I am so sorry that my generation has led you astray from the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I began to well and repent. And I said, please, please forgive us. We, it's our fault. The Lord says, you know, we've been blaming these young people for being rebellious and wicked. And the Lord gave me an understanding the other night. He said, it's not their fault. He said, I hold the previous generation accountable for the, uh, the youth that have gone astray in this time. And I said, my God, I started weeping. And I said, it's our fault, Lord. It's our fault. It's our fault that they've gone astray. It's my fault if my children go astray. It's my fault. Because the Bible says if we train up a child in the way that they shall go, when they are older, they will not depart from that truth. So why are they departed? The Lord says the older generations is held responsible for what is happening right now with the young people going astray. And so this is what the Lord showed me. Can we see our nation saved right now? Can we see a breakthrough? The Lord gave me a secret. He said, if my age uh, 40 and up will identify and repent right now for, it doesn't matter if you didn't do it. We are standing in the gap for the generation that has said, whatever the generation feels like doing, let them do it. You know, no more discipline anymore because we're trusting that they know how to guide their life. My God, I'm so glad I didn't do that for my two-year-old. They would have ran out into the street or gotten lost somewhere, you know, or ate too much sugar and made themselves sick because, you know, I didn't say, no, you can't have another cupcake. My God, something happened and the enemy crept into our educational system and started teaching some kind of weird understanding do you guys remember this? Listen to me. Those of you that are my age and older, remember when they started creeping in this whole thing about don't discipline your children and just teach them to make good choices. And they kind of, they kind of took away from discipline. They started shaming discipline. Remember this. Do you remember this? And they started shifting the way parents raised their children. 
and literally giving children almost like an adult responsibility. Remember this happened. That was demonic. That was demonic. And so what happened is he slowly crept in so that the next generation now, they don't even know what discipline is. And when they have children, it's going to be out of control. So listen, we did it, friends. I couldn't even contain myself. Felt like my eyes were going to pop out of my head while I'm holding my daughter. And she's going, Mom, you didn't do anything. Mom, you didn't do anything. I was like, I know, honey. But my generation did it. And I just, I feel so sorry. And I said, Lord, I'm so sorry. All of these kids could be on their way to hell right now. And it's our fault. And the Bible says, if we confess our faults one to another. So I'm confessing to you right now. We're confessing our faults one to another that we might be healed. It's in James. The Lord said if the heart of the fathers don't return to the children and the children to the fathers, he would come and strike the earth with a curse. Another version says with destruction. So this is the word of the Lord. And I have some, a few more things to share with you. So please don't jump off. But I've got to get this out there. And we've got to pray this right now. And I'm calling you guys over these next few days, over these next few weeks, and even over this next year, as we continually see uprisings or whatever it is that we're going to see, listen, we've got to repent on behalf of our generation for allowing this generation to go astray. We've allowed them to go into church and not listen to the word of the Lord. There's no structure. I don't know about you, but every church I go to, and I did it too, and I've repented for this before, I would see children on the back wall with headphones on and a screen in front of their face. Ears were deaf. Eyes were blind to what the Lord God was releasing in the service. We have to repent. What if that would have happened in the 1800s when revivals were pouring out? Children weren't just sitting on the back doing this because that's basically what it is. They're doing this and they're doing this. Is this really what we want our kids to be doing? while the Holy Ghost is pouring out? Is that really what we want our children to be doing in church? Because they're not getting the anointing, friends. Don't use that whole, well, they're soaking up the anointing. No, they're not. No, they're not. Because Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. Whoever has eyes to see, let him see. Jesus never talked about just sitting under the anointing and soaking it up. So that's all I'm going to say about that. We need to repent when our children go to church, we need to, we need to take the devices away. We need to take the stuff away. We need to repent. It's my generation. We've done it. When the devices came out, we use it as babysitters because it's easy. I already understand this. I understand that. I did it for a time because it was easier, especially when I needed to preach up front. I needed to preach and I didn't have anybody to watch my kids. So what did I do? I let the TV babysit my kids. No, this is unacceptable. No, YouTube is not going to babysit our children anymore. I want us all to repent. I want us to pull our kids out of this devices. They should not be on their hours and hours a day. This was the devil's plan to numb them, to cause them to become deaf and blind so that when it was time for them to rise up, they would have no understanding of anything that was truth is because we didn't teach it to them. And then what happens is they're, they're, it's time for them to go vote and they're just going to vote for whoever tells them to vote because all they've been trained is to not think for themselves. They've been trained to whatever they see on that video screen is truth. They've literally been trained. Do you not understand what I'm saying? I'm telling you, we have got to get them away from these screens. We've got to get them away from these shows. They're demonic. They are pouring in more demons day after day. Every show that's being created is getting worse and worse because the devil is trying to steal a generation that God has called, okay? So you guys got the point. You have the point, right? This generation is so anointed and so called by the Lord Jesus Christ to bring in breakthrough. And they're supposed to take it to the streets. That's why they feel like they're supposed to go to the streets. That's why they're out crying. That's why they're out raging. Because the spirit in them says, I am called to do this. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? And they're called to go to the street. So what we have to do is we have to get truth in them and shift their understanding. The enemy's trying to twist the truth. They are preachers. They are to outcry in the street. They are to spread fire in the street. That is what they're called to do. So my friends, we need to repent to our children. If you've never repented to your children for allowing them to be deceived by the media, by the YouTube, by the ads, by the Disney app, 
by the Netflix cartoons. If you've never repented to your children, you need to go repent to your children. And I want you to repent in the place of prayer and ask God to forgive this generation, the previous generation, of what we've done to these young people because he's holding us accountable, okay? So, Father, let's pray. Let's pray about this right now. And I've got just a few more things to share uh, with you guys, okay? Um, I really feel like what we see in the future right now, what we're going to see from here on out, guys, if we will truly take this message to heart and we will truly do this and turn back to the ancient path of truly training our children in the way that they should go, um, I believe that we can see this shift and change and we'll come into this great awakening. Remember that the words have come forth about the youth awakening, right? The billion soul youth harvest. Guys, they are called to harvest, but it's not just in the place of prayer where we're going to get them to turn back to the truth. Do you understand? We're going to pray, yes, but I want to tell you something. God told me a long time ago that before you go out to the streets, you have to go out in prayer, meaning you get on your knees, you pray and intercede for the generation for the people you will speak to. Then when you go out, that's the second part. There's two parts. There's intercession, then going. Okay, we can't just be intercessors. We can't just be goers. We have to be both. We must intercede and then we must go. So here's the thing. The only way we're going to get to their heart is if we first pray and then we go to them and we preach the gospel and we preach the truth. And what's going to happen is the blinders are going to come off their eyes because God has anointed them with truth. They just need a voice to show them and remind them of what they were really called to do. And this is what Monday and I are doing. We're seeing drug addicts set free. We're seeing them come out of drugs and then we're seeing them completely discipled. And guess what? Now helping us to get other drug addicts off of drugs. This is what Jesus Christ did. Jesus Christ didn't go to the high and lofty elite status people when he looked for disciples to spread the message of the good news of the cross. You know who he went to? He went to those that were lowly and humble and dirty and stinky. He went to the prostitutes who smelled. He went to the tax collectors who smelled of money and he went to the fishermen who smelled to high heaven of stinky fish. He chose what people closed their nose to and were disgusted by to call them into the kingdom to become his disciples. And I'm telling you in this day, we're going to see the same thing because remember the parable of the wedding feast when the Lord said, go and call the sons and the daughters to the wedding feast. And they went and called, but no one wanted to come. No one came. And that's the body of Christ right now. God is calling to the body of Christ. Please come preach my gospel to the lost. Preach to the lost. Go answer the great commission. Okay. He's calling the sons and daughters right now. You need to listen. We have a chance to answer this call from heaven. And it started, uh, I mean, it's always been, but it really started on the increase a couple of years ago before this youth harvest began to manifest, which is happening on both sides. We see the youth being harvested for the enemy's work and we see the youth being harvested for the Lord's work. There is both sides. And so it's happening right now. And we have to choose to answer because in that parable, the Lord said, if they won't come, then go into the highways and byways. Go find the maimed and the lamed. Come on. And the blind. Call them into the wedding feast. So here's what I see God doing. I see him raising up. I've seen, I'm, I'm seeing drug addicts set free, being raised up in the gospel and becoming turned around givers for Jesus Christ. Now ministering the gospel to other drug addicts, finding them and getting them off the streets. Don't tell me that we're not in the parable of the wedding feast right now. Um, We're literally seeing those that were maimed, lamed, and blind and broken. The drug addicts, okay? We see them becoming the harvesters. This is literally the parable, friends. And I'm telling you right now, if you will go focus on those that are the most broken. Why? Because Jesus told us, he that is forgiven little loves little, but he that is forgiven much loves much. So the ones that are the dirtiest, the most sinful people, when they get touched by God, are going to become the most radical, gospel-preaching, firebrand, Jesus lovers you've ever seen. And you won't be able to stop them. That's me. That's you. 
That's my husband. That's these drug addicts that are set free now, preaching the gospel to other drug addicts, getting them off the streets. That's what's happening. He that loves much was forgiven much. That's true for me. And friends, I'm telling you right now, he that is forgiven much will do anything for the one who forgave them. And Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, oh, it's the most glorious thing. We're going to see people healed, set free, and delivered. So I'm telling you guys, now is the time to go and reach this young people, the young people especially. Reach them all, but I need you targeting the young generation. Just like the devil went and targeted them in our schools and targeted them with the media and targeted them with all this false lies, trying to touch what is truth inside of them and twist it and get them confused. It's time for us to preach the truth. We need to repent. We need to go to them. We literally need to go to them and repent even. I think I'm going to go and repent to the young people and tell them I am so sorry that you've had to grow up in this kind of generation where everything was manipulated, everything was lying to you, everything was teaching you wicked, evil, and God wants you to have the truth. And when we pray over them, the Holy Ghost is going to hit them. They're never going to feel anything like that in their life. It happens all the time, friends. So here's what I want to tell you. We have so much victory and authority in the Spirit. You don't need permission from anybody. You have permission from heaven to go and loose the wicked from their bonds. Loose them and let them go. Pray over them. Let them fill the Holy Ghost. And then continue relationship with them. Don't just say, God bless you, go your way. You can do that. I know sometimes you might have to. But it's time for us to really hone in and start building up our local communities for Jesus Christ. You remember when I told you guys this? It's time for us to build up our local communities for Jesus Christ. Remember when I told you this? Do you remember when I started feeling this? It was like months even to a year ago. And I started saying, I'm telling you, the uh, God is looking at home groups. God is pointing to home groups. God is saying, build up your home groups right now. And this is where we have to go. This is what we have to do, okay? So as this takes place with the youth, we're going to repent. We're going to bring them back to the Lord, okay? This is how we're repenting. My generation is. We're going to go get these young people. We're repenting. We're repenting from not preaching the gospel to them. We're repenting for not praying for them and seeing them healed. We're repenting for not preaching truth to them about sin is sin. We're repenting. We're going to change all this around. My generation, the ones above me, it's time, friends. We've got to repent. We've got to come back to the children. We've got to turn our hearts directly towards them. They need to be everything right now because they are being lost. Okay? Now, as we do this, I was shown just recently by the Holy Spirit that a new voice was going to rise and bring liberty to the captives of this nation. I saw a new party. I saw a new voice. Um, I believe it's going to happen on... a. Uh, the side of righteousness. I also believe it's going to happen on the other side, on the wickedness. I believe we're going to see groups arise outside of the groups that we have seen. There's new groups arising that are going to, you know, contend against each other, but uh, truth will prevail. The righteousness will prevail, but we must pray. We must pray for this um, because the enemy is going to try to use this and twist and recruit young people for his mission, and we're going to see part of that, but let's not let any of our young people be lost and uh, taken by this demonic agenda as much as possible. We need to get to them. We need to see them. So this is what I saw. I saw the voice will create a new party and open the eyes of those that have been blindly following the others. This voice shall be peaceful yet strong in opposition of the lies that we have been subjected to and the lies that are arising now. Uh, following this voice, I see a massive youth movement, especially young black voices. Who will resist the party of which they have been faithful to and they will arise together and create a new party of liberty. It will not be to the left or to the right, but it will be centered in truth and justice. It is coming forth in the days of head and it will attempt to liberate the minds of long bound followers of the system. They will be as one, walk as one, talk as one, and move as one. They are one. With their deeply held beliefs in ancient truths, they will peacefully march. Many will follow them because a new era has dawned. I only say this to bring great alertness. If we do not stand strong and lift our voices and cry aloud, it may crumble and not come to the fruition of what it was intended to do. 
We must pray that what should be will be and that it will form and walk in the way of righteousness. The enemy will seek to use it for himself and other groups will seek to form also. This is a call to wake and pray like never before. Pray for our young people to see clearly because the future of our nation depends on it. And so guys, the Lord showed me that secret. If you're just jumping on, you need to hear what I shared in the very beginning. I've got just a couple more things to share with you. Um, now is the time to do identificational repentance. This is what I heard from the Holy Spirit, so I need to keep repenting this, uh, re repeating this and repenting of this. <laughs> identificational repentance for my generation leading the young generation astray, allowing them to be led astray by blinding their eyes with screens and covering their ears with earphones and not preaching the truth to them and allowing the world to raise them. And our generation has let them go astray and the Lord says he holds us responsible. It is our fault. So we're not gonna blame the young people anymore. Can I get an amen? We're not gonna blame the young people that all they know is what they know because it's all that they've seen. It's not their fault. They need to be spoken to with truth. They need to feel the love of Jesus Christ and they will follow him. So it's time for us to confess our faults. I heard this from the Holy Spirit. He said that this generation will confess her fault. There's something that's going to happen that it's going to satisfy that place of the mercy in, in God's heart, okay? And then we're going to see true healing come because we're going to humble ourselves and we're going to say, God, this is our fault and we're sorry. And so I just pray that the Holy Spirit would hit you, friend, that you would have a moment where he draws you into that repentance. See, I can't, I can't repent unless the Holy Spirit's causing me to repent, okay? I, I mean, I could sit here and say, Lord, forgive us, you know. But it needs to be truly deeply felt for me or I don't even want to go into intercession. And so when it hits me, it's random moments. I'll be walking around the house. I'll be getting ready. I'll be telling my kids good night. I'll be making dinner, whatever. There's random moments and intercession will hit me. That's when, that's when you flow. That's when you let it touch God's heart. That's when you weep. That's when you cry. That's when you move with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so friends, we've got to do this. We need to hit this hard in prayer, okay? Moving on, I saw a word for Taiwan. I did not know it was a word for Taiwan until I heard this. So I was going to bed the other night. As I was going to bed, literally laying my head on my pillow and just and just fixing my, my comforter, just adjusting my comforter, I heard the Holy Spirit say, uh, Major, Ty, uh, Major Chapang, Major Chapang, okay? And... Um, Where's the word? Hold on a minute. I I heard major chapang, and uh, I said, what is that? I, I heard it loud as clear, guys, as if it was just a thought that I had. I heard major chapang. So I began to research it. I didn't know what it was. The only thing I found was that it was a food company in Taiwan named Chapang, and uh, it was for, like, trading food and things like that. So somebody messages me and says, that's literally a location in Taiwan in the northern area close to a port. It's literally a city uh, in Taiwan that is on the northwestern area of Taiwan. I said, wow. So I literally heard a location in Taiwan. I was unaware. I don't know any city names in Taiwan. And come to find out that the U.S. had lifted restrictions on Taiwan, but... So long story short, it's interesting that I was hearing something connected to Taiwan. In the midst of these things happening, uh, the Lord is highlighting it. So I need to call you guys to prayer because this is what I do. I lead intercession. I lead prayer and I give you, uh, you know, details from what I hear from the Lord. And so we need to cover Chapang in prayer. Um, I know that after I heard this, I discovered that after the U.S. lifted these bans with uh, Taiwan, that China was very upset and they began to fly planes over that area. And I didn't know this. So I don't know what's happening now. I haven't looked at the news yet. I need to, to check it. But we need to cover that area in prayer that no lives will be lost and that whatever the enemy intends to do against Taiwan and against the location of Chapang, we bind it in Jesus' name. We say the enemy will not be able to touch it nor the people. Father, let your will be done in Taiwan in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, and the next thing I heard was uh, recently I just released a word that I saw, and you guys know if you watched my last video that that whole Holy Ghost fire explosion happened, and the Lord revealed to us about the JL arising. 
JL was in Judges chapter 4, and she was someone literally outside of the camp. She was somebody that the enemy came to. The enemy came to her, and he was the commander of the army fighting against the armies of Israel in the time of Deborah the judge. Okay, now if there's too much information. I need you to go back and watch the whole last video I did. Just go on YouTube and watch it. But the Lord highlighted J.L. that he would deliver the enemy into her hands. The enemy literally came to her tent and said, please hide me and protect me. And she said, oh, sure, I'll hide you and protect, her, and protect you. And she covered him up with a blanket. And then before you know it, he falls asleep. And then she gets a hammer and a tent peg and she takes him out. And I'm, I mean, that's violent. You know, she takes him out. And it was God's will for her to take him out because Deborah received the word of knowledge when she spoke to the king of Israel that you will have victory over your enemy. He will be delivered into your hand, but so that you do not get the glory, God is delivering your enemy into the hands of a woman. And there was so much anointing on that. And the Lord told me, you need to release this word that there is a Deborah and there is a woman, JL, that will work together. And the enemy will come directly to her thinking he's safe. And then she will turn around and deliver the final blow. Now, I don't know what that looks like. But we'll know it when we see it. I know that I know that I know God is saying he's anointed someone that no one knows, no one sees, and they're going to know it when it comes to pass, okay? So these women are rising, so get ready. Amen? Amen. Now, we must respond, guys, to all of these words. I'm, I'm trying to recap right now. We need to show a response to these words, like I've been saying. We need to respond with the intercession, we need to respond with prayer, and then we need to respond with going. Two things, intercede and go. Let's, let's simplify so that everybody can take from this message today. It's time to intercede clearly with these words. The Lord told us we have authority to bind the devil. Remember, I had that dream. We already know we have authority to bind the devil, but the Lord has to remind us. I saw the two dragons, and we were binding the work of the enemy. It's time to bind the work of the enemy. We do not lay down. We do not roll over. We do not give up. That is not within us. We have fire. We will stand and we will see truth come forth. Interesting enough, the number 222 is now the number of the Democrat House seats. Did you know this? They have 222 Democrat House seats. I find that interesting, especially with the 222 God showed me. He showed me this would be a year of Daniel 222. And he and that scripture says, he knows the deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. Don't tell me that that was just coincidence. God put a sign right in front of our eyes to remind us. Even with all this stuff going on, if you think wickedness is going to prevail, it's not going to prevail. God said this is a time where he's revealing deep and secret things. The lies are going to be exposed. The light dwells with him, and he is going to shine the light on this. So I want you guys to hang on with the Holy Ghost. We don't relent. We don't give up. What has God said? I do not change my heart and my mind and my thinking based on what I see. I will never do that. That is where, that is wavering, friends. I want to tell you something. If you don't get solid in the Spirit of God right now, when this kind of stuff arises in the future, you won't make it. You'll be tossed to and fro, and you could be drowned, you know? And I'm telling you right now, it's time to get strong in the Spirit, to know what your God has said, and you do not change or shift your thinking in any way. In fact, I pray that the fire of God would come on you stronger than ever before. It is time for us to respond to God and show him that we are those that do not bow our knee to Baal and that we are going to stand in faith and run this race. And we are going to see, I'm telling you, massive glory and miracles outpouring which brings me to this 
Here's what the Holy Spirit showed Monday and I to do as a response to what is happening right now, as a response to what is happening for the harvest, where the anointing is, because we want to be where God is moving. So here's our response. Since Black Friday of 2019, Monday Martin and I came into agreement to start ministering on the streets daily. Daily evangelism for hours a day, been ministering on the streets. My God, did we not know how prophetic that was, especially with everything being on the streets in 2020. All the news was on the streets. Every activity was on the streets. And God has his people already ahead of the enemy, ahead of everything the enemy's doing as a sign that God knows and that we hear him and we're discerning his voice. So we were on the streets, guys, daily. We're still doing it. We're past a year now, every day, hours a day. In fact, Monday is going right now. He's left to have a Bible study with a group of people, some of them heroin free for almost a month. Some of them a couple weeks, some of them a month, already on fire, ready to go get more off the streets. Nobody's going to help them, friends. Who's going to help them? We've got to go get them. They're stuck in prison to the heroin devil. And don't say, well, if they want to be free, they can get free. You got to understand something. They could die. They could die. They can't just get free. They need help. They need other medication. They need prayer. They need a place to go. They need people cheering them on. They need encouragement. They can't get free. Don't tell me they can get free if they want to get free. You got to understand that some of those homeless people, yeah, they want to stay there, but there are so many of them. If you will talk to them, they don't want to be there. They want out. They feel trapped. And if somebody doesn't come to them, they're stuck. So I encourage you, get a group of people. Go find your homeless community. Talk to them. Get to know them. See what's going on. Use discernment, okay? And when the Holy Spirit tells you, I want you to help this person, help this person, okay? Help. It doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't take a lot of effort. There's organizations that can help them. You can drive them places, whatever. Get you a group so you're not alone, okay? And use wisdom. I know all that stuff. Use discernment. But seriously, if we can, we can use wisdom to the... We always say use wisdom, but we use it as a, an excuse to not do anything. We can't do this anymore. Use the wisdom of God and go help those that need it. Okay, so listen. Hundreds have been saved through this time in our local city. Hundreds have been healed. Many becoming drug-free. Getting baptized in our local lake. Becoming disciples and now joining us as we continue to do daily evangelism. Looks a lot like Jesus' ministry, friends. I figured Jesus knew how to did it. He knew how to do it. He made it work, and it worked. So let's do this. I'm encouraging you to do this in your local community. All you need is a small group. We literally started with just Monday and me, and then God began to grow it. He began to bring people that wanted to do it. He added to the church daily. The Holy Spirit will add to you. When you do the work of the kingdom, God will bring you everything you need. So here's where we're at right now. This is where I'm getting to because I'm really excited. Right now, we have a, a man that's going to give us a tent to use so that we can do a tent revival nightly. Nightly. Every day. We're going to set it up. We're going to take our equipment out there. We're going to do revival meetings. And we're going to let God take over the city. How about that? We're going to take to the streets and we're going to light some fires and we're going to spread the gospel good news of Jesus Christ. And so here's what I'm saying. We need some people to get on board with us, not just financially helping us. You can do that if you want to. But I'm doing a call today to ask you, will you join up with us? And if you're in this local area, if you're in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, if you're in Nashville, Tennessee, if you're anywhere in that area and you want to drive and be part of these nightly meetings, here's what we're looking for. We're looking for different land locations to set up. We're looking for people that can volunteer to be part of the team. That's prayer. That's worship. That's uh, catchers. That's watchers. That's deliverance ministers, okay? Uh, you know, people that can minister. Because when this goes down and the Holy Ghost pours out under this place, we're going to need spirit-filled believers there with us. If you are interested and you want to be connected to us here in the Nashville, Tennessee area, and you can come be part of this, we want you to email us, info at contagiouslove, I-N-T-L dot com. 
I dreamed about it, friends. I dreamed about these meetings. I know exactly what the Lord's going to do. I know exactly what he's saying. I know this is his voice. I literally saw it in a dream. He said to do this. It's time. He showed me the revival pouring out. If you have a location, if you have a yard, if you have a place that you want to set up, you want us to come set up a tent, you're, listen, we're going to do the traveling tent revival, okay? We'll pack it up and we'll go to different locations. If we find a really good location that just bust open, we'll stay there for probably weeks. Whatever God does, we're just going to follow the wind. But this is what I'm called to do. This is what Monday is called to do. It's right down our anointing, right down the lane of our anointing. And we've got to do this in the streets. We've got to. We've got to do it where the world can see. They've got to see God moving. They've got to come out of the deception, the smoke screen of the devil right now. They've got to see the kingdom of heaven. So email us if you're anywhere in the area or if you want us to come to your area. Um, I don't know how big the tent is, whether we can travel statewide. But if you have, uh, if you want to call people in your state and you, if you can set it up for us, we'll come. And we'll help you set up too. But if you want to call a tent place, ask them if they'd be willing to uh, donate or let us use it for revival meetings for a nonprofit. It'll be tax exempt for them. If they want to be part of something in this dark day, call them. Find land and then let us know. Real simple. Call some tent places. Find some open land. And then let us know. Find out if there has to be a permit. And then we'll come. It's real simple. We have worship people with us that will come. We, you know, we do prayer. We do deliverance. We have ministers with us that, that cast out demons on the streets. They have an anointing for deliverance. So we have that. We have the music. We have the singing. We have the preaching. We have the fire. We have the Holy Spirit. We see God heal and do miracles. So we've got it all. We've got everything. There's no reason for us not to go. So if you want to be involved and be part of the team and pour out in any way, because we're probably going to rotate, we're probably going to give some people breaks and bring other teams in, okay? So email us, info at contagiouslove, I-N-T-L dot com. Let us know what you're interested in doing or how you're interested in helping. If you cannot do that and you're far away and there's just, you want to help though, you want to be part so I want you, if you are interested in to help us financially as we have to take care of the cost of this, whether there's land rental or permits or whatever it is we have to do, um, providing water for our team. I mean, there's just so many little things that is we're going to have to purchase. So if you're interested in helping us with that cost, just go to contagiouslove.com and we'll put the link up for you and just click on that give link. And you can give into these revival, tent, Holy Ghost fire meetings. You can give on PayPal. We have paypal.me forward slash contagious love. You can give on a cash app. It's dollar sign C-L-I give. There's the links coming up on the screen. So just click on that. Uh, we have a Venmo at Monday-Martin. Okay, it's all there. And you can be part of this, okay? If you want to put it in the memo, this is for tent meetings. You can do that. But just know that, listen, we are going to be pouring into it literally. So you don't need to worry about it. That's where it's going to go. We want to see these drug addicts clean. We want to see them help. This is what we're focused on. We're focusing on getting them into housing. We're focusing on getting them, uh, you know, into jobs. I mean, whatever it is we can do to see these people's lives turned around, we're going to be part of it. We're going to be right there. And we're going to continue you um, raising up these teams to do Bible studies and uh, discipleship okay so that's what you're you're pouring into if you have just found out about our ministry and you want to be part of this please consider going there and giving also you can uh, become a monthly partner by just clicking on one-time donation there's a little box there and you can become a monthly partner okay so real quick, also make a note to sign up for our newsletter on that website. Go to our website, contagiouslove.intl.com. We're literally getting hundreds of signups and we need you to sign up to stay in touch because we don't know what the future holds. We really don't know. We didn't expect all that stuff to happen last week. And so just in case so that we can stay in contact, sign up for our newsletter and you will get a newsletter once a month telling you where we'll be and what we're doing. On that newsletter, you'll find testimonies of people getting saved, the drug addicts, whatever it is that happened that month that was like crazy awesome, we'll put in that newsletter. And you'll see on there um, where our books are. 
where our events are. So real quick, events. February 5th, I have a Prophet Intercessor Night scheduled right now at the Well of Nashville. It will be at 7 p.m. and it's called Align because it's time for us to align in the Spirit and be led by the Holy Ghost, pray and decree. Intercession is just as vital as the evangelism. We must do both of them. So if you're in the Nashville, Tennessee area, please come see us and be part of that. We're going to open it up so that people can prophesy and pray and release things led by the Holy Spirit. Okay? February 5th, the Well of Nashville, 7 p.m. The next thing I want to talk to you about is a school I have on February 13th at the Hampton Inn in Smyrna, Tennessee. There's two sessions, 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. And you can find that link in that whole box of links there below. I believe it's pinned there at the bottom. There will be a link for the school. I just want you to click on that and tell me you're going. Just click going if you're going or interested. That way it'll put it in your calendar. This is for the dark horses of God who want more teaching, okay? This is for the dark horses who want to be encouraged in your calling, your identity, and to be fired up to run your race. And we're just going to go for it. Whatever God wants, there's the school link right there. I want you guys to show up. There's no registration. The book is included if you don't have the book. If you do have the book, bring it. I want to sign it. I want to put a special note in there to you from me, okay? I don't write the same thing twice. Can you believe it? Out of the hundreds of books that I've signed, I've never written the same thing twice. Every word is so unique to each person, and God will specifically tell me what to write, and sometimes it's, I don't even understand it, but they understand it, and it's amazing. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost, so that school's gonna be amazing, like literally. You need to come, okay? We'll take love offerings and things like that, but I don't want to charge registration, so it'll be awesome. Uh, also, if you want to follow me on social media, it's very important for you to contact me, us on some of my other things. Like, all these videos will be on YouTube. Um, my username on YouTube and Instagram is at Jennifer Martin CLI. At Jennifer Martin CLI. That's also the username for this Facebook page. If you forget it and you can't find it, if you type in Jennifer Martin CLI, you will find it. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's it that I have for today, friends. I want to pray for you before we go and just bless you, okay? So, Father, I just thank you so much for my friends. Thank you, Lord, for calling us together for such a time as this, Lord, to see you move in the earth. God, let the fire of God come on your people like never before. Oh, Lord, baptize us. Baptize us in the Holy Ghost. Lord, baptize us, Lord, with the boldness, Lord, that spirit of boldness, Lord, to go out and do what you have put in us to do, that we will not back up, that we are confident, Lord, in what you've put inside of us, that we're not going to waver or be tossed to and fro, but that we are going to know that we know that we know that we are your child and that we have authority in the earth, Lord, to see your kingdom come in the lives of other people. Lord, I pray that my friends will push back the kingdom of darkness and help rescue people that have been, been bound for so many years by the devil. Lord, I pray for compassion to come on us like never before. That your heart of compassion, Lord, will come on us and cause us, Lord, to yield to you. Cause us to love people, to care about people, to reach our hand, Lord, to them. To lay down our life, even when it's not convenient. Because we understand that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And, Lord, great is our reward in heaven. And that we want to store up treasures in heaven, Lord. Not on the earth. We want to store up rewards in heaven. I pray for that revelation right now for my friends. And Lord, I pray that that place of victory, that spirit of victory, Lord, would pour out on them, that no fear would grip them, but there would be so much faith in them as they move forward this year into the full completed work that you have destined for them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
And Father, I just want to leave space for you right now, Holy Spirit, to just touch broken bodies. Anyone that is broken or needs healing, that they would be healed right now. That you would release the power of your Spirit upon them, Lord. Heal them. Set them free. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I curse the root of pain. I curse the root of sickness. I curse the root of disease. I command it to come out of the bodies in the name of Jesus. I loose them from pain. I loose them from trauma. I loose them right now from lies of the enemy. I loose their minds. I loose their souls right now. I loose their spirit right now from every assignment and attack of the devil. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you for rebuking the enemy. Rebuke the devil off each one of their lives. Lord, any place that they need to give to you, let them give it to you. Lord, anywhere where we need to repent, if they need to repent of anything, Lord, I just ask that they would give that to you right now. They would come to the cross, that they would leave those things at the cross today and receive that loving mercy and forgiveness and let the blood of Jesus Christ just run over them and make them new, white as snow, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, touch them with your anointing. I just thank you for that Holy Spirit right now. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Lord, we say let your will be done. Lord, we say we trust you. Lord, we say we believe in you. Lord, we follow you. Lord, we listen. We hear your voice. We know your heart. Thank you, Lord, for Awaken the Heart. Thank you, Lord, for these times where you've touched us so deeply for so many years. You speak to us. You let us know your heart. You're not hiding away. You're right here, right close to us, right near to us, encouraging us, Lord. So I just speak peace and shalom over my friends today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, go and be at peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, do me a favor. If this blessed you today, go ahead and share it. Go ahead and share it with people. I feel the presence of the Lord. He's so sweet. If the Lord has touched you and healed you, please let me know in the comments. Please let me know. If there was pain that left your body, please let me know. Please put that in the comments. Let me know. If you're watching the replay and this message bless you, will you let me know that it blessed you today? If you're going to be praying and interceding like I'm calling forth for the body of Christ, will you let me know in the comments, yes, I'm going to be interceding. Yes, I'm going to be praying. Yes, I'm going to be going to the streets. Yes. Yes. If you've never made Jesus your Lord and you want to make him your Lord, say, I want to make Jesus my Lord. Maybe you just found me randomly on, you know, through the live stream, through the watch, and you just were drawn to watch the session today. If you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life and you're ready to come out of complacency, and darkness and sin, which is making you miserable. If you want to do that, say, yes, I want to make Jesus my Lord. Say, yes, I want Jesus as my Lord. Just let me know in the comments. And friend, it's as simple as that. You tell Jesus you want him to be your Lord. You, you ask him to forgive you of your sin. You ask him to cleanse you. You ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. And then... You turn from your wicked sins. You don't go back and do them. And you follow Jesus Christ. Consecrate yourself. Dedicate yourself to Jesus. It's time, my friends. He's preparing his bride for his return. A bride that is dedicated and completely his. Completely his. Not part of the world and part of the kingdom of heaven, but that we only, only are dedicated to Jesus Christ. Amen. If that's you, just let me know in the comments. I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to go over the comments. We're going to pray for you. We bless you. 
Thank you guys once again. If you need any of the links I talked about there below in the comments pinned right there, you can come back and, and click on them. You should be able to click on them right now straight from the um, straight from the broadcast. You should be able to open up those links and just click on the one you need to click on, okay? So check that out. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter. Come to our events. Help us be part of the tent revivals, okay? And uh, if you can give any amount today, that would be amazing. The links are there below. Love you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, those of you that could share today. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. I bless you. I love you. I look forward to seeing you next time, okay? It's time to awaken the church. And it's time to awaken the heart. I love you, friends. Bye-bye.